Yes, and gentlemen, it is the 210th day of Russia's uh, invasion and the ninth year of war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine. This is Andrei Sochenko. I want to welcome all journalists on behalf of Ukraine Media Center, all the journalists who are sharing the information about our fight for freedom. Today we will talk to Petro Bastan, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Ukraine to the Republic of Oceania. Mr. Best, I would like to start with the topic which is in the news because the Russian media have uh, made it known that there is a statement coming from the president uh, of Russia. There is a lot of rubbish actually because there are some threats uh, about the use of uh, mass um, weapons and also, there is a decision about a partial mobilization. So, what about Vilnius and Lithuania? What is the perception there? Have you had a possibility to discuss it with your colleagues? Uh, yes, I want to welcome everyone. And the statement of uh, Putin and his threats are in the center of attention of everyone, Lithuania included. So, today we will have a meeting with the Minister of Defense, the Minister for Foreign Affairs to talk about uh, reaction of Lithuania, a specific reaction, and I'm sure that it will be a strong one in light of the most recent uh, reactions that we have on the level of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Defense, as it was with uh, Izum and in some other cases. Is there this feeling in Lithuania that such statements are a threat not only to Ukraine, and against Ukraine, but also to the West uh, such. Yes, there is an absolute understanding, and it has been there for a while, especially in Lithuania, because uh, Lithuania and Ukraine, these are the countries which are clearly aware of those threats. We are in a similar position. We understand that such uh, threats and such military actions and aggression of Russia, this is aggression against uh, Europe, against Eastern Europe, and the goals of Putin are well known to everyone. He has made them uh, publicly and uh, Lithuanians, uh, they are on the same page with us and uh, they have this response. They are very proactive and they have in Europe, uh, in NATO, so they are, they show the solidarity and unity supporting Ukraine. And they really understand what is the meaning of these threats and what could be the outcomes. We have some information from Riga because Latvia has announced that it is not going to make any changes as far as the visa regime is concerned, especially when we talk about those Russians who are actually um, dodgers and who... I want to talk about this visa uh, restrictions uh, imposed by Lithuania and other countries how does it actually work? It was a joint initiative of the Baltic uh, countries on a national level. They took a certain decision uh, forbidding um, citizens of Russia to enter uh, these countries, the Lithuanian Republic, on the level of the government and its parliament have approved uh, the decision and uh, uh, since the 19th of uh, September they came into force and there are certain um, actions that they envision. It means that the process for application to uh, receive visa by citizens of the Russian Federation and Belarus has been stopped because Lithuanian believes that Belarus, which supports uh, Russian's aggression, also deserves uh, such restrictions. Then when we talk about uh, some outer borders, um, external borders of the European Union, only those citizens of the Russian Federation will be allowed into the country. This could be dissidents, this could be humanitarian cases, uh, members of crews and brigades um, in international transportation and representatives of diplomatic missions who pass uh, the, the country in transit or those who have uh, the, uh, the permit uh, to reside in the European Union or who apply for a long-term stay. So those people who apply uh, for a visa, there will be an individual um, examination. Since the first day of this restriction, 18 uh, citizens of the Russian Federation have not been led into Lithuania, into the country. But this is not a 
great number, actually. So maybe it is more of a symbolic gesture, but this, or is this a real leverage? It is a political decision. So it goes in line with the implementation of sanctions against Russia, the rival restrictions and that are being imposed on Russia and its citizens for the war waged, being waged in Ukraine. That is why Lithuania, the same way as other Baltic countries, they are on the forefront of this uh, policy and as part of the European Union, they really lobbied this uh, general uh, decision on the level of the EU as far as Russian citizens are concerned. Well, the EU is not ready for such a decision. They just um, cancelled uh, the agreement on uh, facilitation of a visa regime and Lucianian are at the forefront. They have already implemented this decision, so it has both a political sense because it is a signal of strengthening, uh, exerting this pressure against Russia and sanction policy, but it is also taking care of uh, national uh, security of our um, countries because we have all the reasons uh, to be afraid that uh, those uh, citizens uh, coming from Russia to Lithuania, to the EU states, they can pose a danger. That is why uh, it's a meaningful action. And it is a pilot project. It is a good uh, example, I guess, for other EU states. And that would be really good for the rest of them to adopt uh, a similar uh, decision. Yes, yeah, so Lithuania is uh, at the forefront and yeah, we are very proactive. So what is the reaction of Lucania to the news from Izum and those barbarian actions of uh, the invaders on newly liberated territories of the Kharkiv Oblast. There was a clear message uh, from the management, from the president, from the uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. They clearly stated two or maybe three very important um, aspects. As far as this situation is concerned, to start with, uh, it has all the signs of genocide against uh, Ukrainians. I'm talking about Izum. Then, secondly, there has to be a special tribunal uh, set up to investigate um, to investigate um, crimes of aggression and genocide, and all of there has to be uh, persecution. They, they have to be prosecuted. And there was a third signal to the international community that Ukraine needs uh, better supplies as far as uh, weapons is concerned. And this is genocide. There, it has to be prosecuted. The international community should use all the international uh, tools for this. And tribunal and uh, military aid uh, needs to come to Ukraine very quickly, in line with the needs which are present. What about military aid of Lithuania to Ukraine? Because in very many aspects, Lithuania is actually being very proactive. Is there anything else that you have already made plans for? We have provided military aid to Ukraine in 120 million euros. If you talk about GDP, then it is actually 2% of GDP of Lithuania. So we rank the fourth in a global rating of uh, countries as far as military aid is concerned. So. It has provided a lot since the very start of the invasion and even before. We all remember about stingers, which were provided to Ukraine uh, right before the invasion uh, in February. And uh, we have uh, this uh, process um, established. There is military aid coming to Ukraine, different trenches. Uh, then there was another trench. Uh, we had um, howitzers. Uh, 20, uh, 20 vehicles uh, provided to our army. But here we talk not only about the support on the governmental level, we can talk about volunteers, uh, the public, and you know, Lithuanian public. Uh, as you probably remember, the majority of people are very much involved in supporting Ukrainians, also military aid. We remember the first marathon Lithuanian to purchase Bayraktar Bondos uh, in August. There was another marathon uh, to purchase for Ukraine 100 uh, 
Kamikaze drones of Polish Ukrainian production. This process is also underway, and we expect that in um, October and November the Ukrainian army will already have these drones. We can also talk about training in the territory of Lithuania and Ukraine. There has been, there is, and there will be uh, trainings for our servicemen. And recently, Lithuania is represented by the Minister of uh, Defense uh, within the EU also initiated the project, this training mission, joint training mission for Ukraine. It was Petro Bastan, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Ukraine to the Republic of Lithuania. Thank you very much for this conversation and uh, I invite everyone to follow um, the updates of uh, the media's